Okay, good day everyone. Now we will be uh, discussing uh, one of the final topics natin for this semester. This is now equilibrium analysis. Okay? So what are now the concepts in equilibrium analysis? Okay? After studying demand and supply concepts and uh, computing for the uh, demand and supply equations, what we really want to find out is where the demand and the uh, supply will meet in the middle. Okay? Yeah, and it is now time for us to learn about their greater significance in their respective roles in the market. Unlike our common perception of the market being the place where vendors sell their products and consumers buy them, uh, economics generally sees these two forces as the buyers on the demand side and the sellers on the supply side. And there should be a point where the buyers and sellers should meet. Kaya sabi dito, when all buyers and sellers agree on the same price, we achieve what is termed as your market equilibrium. Okay? For the market equilibrium, at this point, the price is the same for both the uh, demand and supply side. Also, the quantity supplied would be the same. Both sides. Okay? Kaya siya tinawag na equilibrium. It's the same. No? A point where the buyer and seller agrees. Okay? So, hypothet uh, hypothetically, because more often than not, not all buyers or sellers agree in a single price. Totoo naman yan. I'm sure you have experienced that, no? especially when you uh, shared your experiences in our last activities. Always price ang problema ng buyer and seller. So, in economics, a market equilibrium, although hard to achieve, remains to be an important tool in the market analysis. We need to know that point of equilibrium or optimal level where the buyer and seller agrees on the same price. Yan yung co-compete natin for today. Ayan. Okay. Another term for equilibrium analysis is now your demand and supply analysis. Ayan. So let's say we have an example here. We have a data for demand and we have the data for supply. So dito tayo sa demand. Yung law of demand natin still applies, di ba? As the, price goes, uh, as the price goes higher, the quantity demand goes lower. And for the law of supply naman, if the price will go up, also the quantity supply will go up. So, ito yung uh, sinasabi natin uh, opposing forces, kumbaga, di ba? Pero, if you notice, there would be a point where magmimit ang demand and supply, Okay? So, if we will try to compute the gaps, gaps mean yung, ito yung units where hindi sila nag-meet. For example, dito sa first, di ba, 6 pesos yung price, 190 yung quantity demand, 110 yung quantity supply. So, there is a gap of 80 units. Dito naman sa 40, 110 yung quantity demand, 190 naman yung supply, meron uling gap na 80 units. But in the middle, ayan, 10 pesos 150, 10 pesos 150. It means that the uh, demand and supply or the buyer and seller agreed on the same price. So, there is no gap. If there is no gap, ito na yung tinatawag nating equilibrium. Okay? A point where the buyer and seller agrees on a price. Okay? So, what is a gap? Ayan. A gap, as used in ordinary language, simply means a distance between two values. Okay? So, other uh, related terms would be something that needs to be filled and something lacking, inequality or disparity. Now, to give you a visualization, wait lang, oh, diretso tayo dito. We are simply saying that the values are the same or different or in economics, however, especially in equilibrium analysis, a gap is the difference between two quantities. In this case, quantity supplied and quantity demanded given at the same price. Ayan. So, ito yung itsura niya. For example, we have the graph no, for the demand curve and the supply curve. Ayan. So, ayan. Dito sa taas, ito, well, let's say na dito yung point natin ng price, there would be a gap. Ito yung tinatawag nating supply gap. At dito naman sa baba is our demand gap. I mean, demand gap sa taas and sa baba is supply gap. Okay? Ayan. So, what we are trying to find out is ito. A point where the two lines or the two curves meet. Ito yung ating equilibrium. Alright? So, for a supply gap, when a supply, a supply gap exists, not enough products are made available for 
sale. Okay? Which means the demand is higher as compared to the uh, supply. Which causes dissatisfaction among buyers to say the least. This would mean that the buyers would clamor for more products. An example would be a rice. Yeah? A basic commodity such as rice or medical supplies. People might go hungry or may not be treated properly in time because of lack of resources. Ayan. Mas marami si demand as compared kay supply. A demand gap, however, suppliers will also be in peril. This would mean that they have so much products to offer, but there are less takers or buyers. Suppliers may not only lose profits, but at some point may even decide to withdraw from the market or close shop. Worst case scenario, mababawasan ng supplier or when it comes to perishable goods, di ba, if there would be so much supply, mabalik na naman tayo sa example natin, yung ating mga farmers. If there are too many supplies, anong ginagawa nila? They are now throwing their products. Sayang. Okay? That's why we need to find the equilibrium para walang nasasayang. A point where the buyer and seller agrees on the price. Para walang nasasayang. So, let's have any simple exercise dito sa equilibrium analysis. So, how do we really compute for the equilibrium analysis? No, that is the question. So, I have an exercise dito. Simple lang naman. So, I have both equations for the quantity demand and quantity supply. So, let's try to find out no, yung uh, quantity uh, uh, equilibrium, I mean. Okay. So, what we the first step we need to do is to find the price. Ayan. How do we find the price? Wait lang. Let me shift dito sa Excel. Okay. Alright. So, we have these two equations. Equilibrium means that the quantity demand is equal to the quantity supply. Okay? Quantity demands, quantity supply. So, we will try to substitute the value for QD is ito. 10 minus 3P. And for the value for QS naman is 2P. Okay? So, if we will try to transpose and substitute, the formula now would be 10 minus 3P is equal to 2P. Again, eh, itong side na to, it's the QD. Ayan. It's the QD. At itong side naman to, it's the QS. Ayan. Alright? So, with this uh, equation, we can already compute for the price. We transpose. So, then let's transpose uh, 3P on the other side. And so, we have 2P plus 3P. So, we have 10 is equal to 5P. And we divide both equations by 5. Our price now is 2 pesos. Tama ba? It's 2 pesos. Yeah. 10 divided by 5 is 2 pesos. So we now have the value for the P. Now the question is, uh, what would be the units? No. Again, it's a point of equilibrium where both the demand and supply meets, which means that the price is the same, the units will also be the same. So if we have the value here na 2 pesos, ayan, we can now substitute the price on these two equations. Okay? Let's say, hmm, lagay natin dito, ito naman is, lagay natin dito. Ayan. I-delete ko muna to. Alright, our price is 2 pesos. Let's substitute. So QD, Quantity demanded in units, Oops. QD, is equal to 10 minus 3 times 2. Okay. Uh, QD now is equal to 10 minus 3 times 2, that is 6. Therefore, our quantity demanded is 4 units. Okay, so how about for the quantity supply? So we have QS is equal to 2 times 2. So QS is equal to 4 units. Yeah. So the same. Okay. Okay. So ito na yung equilibrium natin. Sa equilibrium price, equilibrium 
price is 2 pesos while the equilibrium units is now 4 units. Ayan. So we have find out no, the point where the buyer and seller will agree. Very easy lang naman ang equilibrium. Oops. Ayan, lagay lang natin dito. Oops, ayaw niya. Anyway, ayan, it's 2 pesos and 4 units. This is also the equilibrium point. Once we graph, we will try to graph, no? Uh, makikita natin where both lines will meet at it will fall on these uh, coordinates. Okay? Ayan. So that is how you compute for the equilibrium price, equilibrium units, or the equilibrium point. Okay? Right, now let's have another activity just to establish no, itong ating equilibrium point. Ayan. So I have prepared something here. Ito. Uh, it's somewhat similar no, with your exam. So let's try to uh, solve this no, as a practice na rin para sa upcoming finals exam. Niya. So in this problem, no, we have this data. Ayan, demand and supply uh, schedule. So we are to re uh, required to graph the following. Uh, solve the following, I mean. So first, we need to plot the demand and supply curve, determine the equation for the quantity demand, equation for the quantity supply, then we compute the equilibrium price, equilibrium units or quantity, and the equilibrium point. Something uh, yung ginawa natin earlier. Okay, so tayo dun sa one. Let's just copy this. No? Copy. Ayan. Ano uli yung ating requirement number one? So, plot the graph. So, lagyan natin dito. Plot the graph. Okay. Excel. Again, it's very easy to plot, no? In Excel. Ayan. Pero, for two graphs, uh, for two lines, I mean, I think it's best that you use um, uh, you use manual or yung graphing paper. But then again, you can still always use Excel as long as you know how to do so. So, dun ulit tayo sa insert. Oops. Saan ka na? Wala. Insert. Dito tayo sa scatter graph. Then, dito tayo sa lines. Okay. Don't forget na to highlight yung ating uh, data. Okay. So, let's just check yung ating data. Select data. Okay, X values natin. Well, let's highlight. Ito ka dapat. Oops. Wait, wait. Let's delete. One more. X values. And ito naman is for the Y values. Okay. Ayan. So the other naman. We can um, create another one. Let's see kung kaya pa. I think there's a way. Hindi ko pa na discover. Pero I'm sure there's a way to put two lines no, in one graph. Pero i-graph muna natin to individually. Insert. Again, dito tayo sa scatter graph. Then, dun tayo sa straight lines. Again, we check the data. X values. Ayan. And the Y values. Then. Okay. Oops. And I really wish we could put this line here. Mm, what happened? Control Z muna natin. Okay. Yeah. So once you do the graph, uh, there should be an intersection. Let me just copy here. Yeah. Ito yung one eh. For drawing two lines, no? I guess it's easier to do it on a graphing paper. Pero it should look something like this. Mm, parang ganyan. Alright? And this will be now your point of equilibrium. Okay? Ayan. 
So that's how you graph. Okay? There should be an intersection. Especially, diba, with the demand and supply curve. Diba? It should be opposing forces. So there should be an intersection. So we are done with the number one. And plot the demand and supply curve. Now let's try to solve number two. Okay. Copy natin to. Oops, ano ba ang requirement natin for number 2? Again, determine now the equation for quantity demand and quantity supplied. Pagsabay na natin ito. Ayan. Quantity, uh, equation of quantity demanded and equation of quantity supplied. So, how do we do this again? So, dito tayo sa demand. Uh, this will now become... Uh, let's compute for the slope first. M is equal to ayan, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Ayan. So this is uh, y2 and y1. Then this is now x2 and x1. Okay. So this is now will become 625 minus 650 over 15 minus 10. And M na 10 will become 6 to 5 minus uh, 650, that is negative 25 over 15 minus 5, that is 5. Can we still simplify this further? Of course. 25 divided by 5 is 5. Negative 5, I mean. So our slope is now negative 5. Alright, now we now have the uh, value for the slope. We can compute for the y-intercept form. Or the y, uh, yeah. So, ano uli yung gagawin din natin? Formula, let's copy this one. Okay. Gagawin natin dito, syempre, we just remove the values for y2 and we will use y1. So, our slope is negative 5. Ayan. That's negative 5 equals y minus, what is the value for y1? That is 650 over x minus x1. So, x1 is now 10. Yeah. I multiply both equations by how much? Tiny shapes. Bracket, 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 bracket. And again, multiply nothing by x minus 10. So we now have negative 5 times x minus 10 is equals 2y minus 650. Okay. Oh, medyo pahaba na ng pahaba yung ating equation. No? So, this is now negative 5x minus a uh, plus. Kasi negative 5 minus negative 10 is positive. 50 is equal to y minus 650. Oops. Can we uh, transpose? Yes po. So, transpose natin si 650 on the other side. So, this is now 5x plus 50 plus 650 is equal to y. Y. Okay. Balik pa rin lang natin. So, this is now y is equal to negative 5x. O, plus na natin. It's negative. It's not 15. 650 plus 50, that is 700. And of course, we need to convert this one sa quantity uh, demand equation. Okay? So, y will now become QD is equal to negative 5 price plus 700. This is the first equation. Okay, we need to compute for the second one. Okay. Ayan. I will delete this. Move lang kita dito. 
Okay, delete, 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 delete. And let's move this equation upstairs. Upstairs. Okay, quantity demand equation. Now, how about our quantity supply equation naman? Alright, using the same process then. Okay, let's compute for the slope using this data. So we have y2 minus y1. So this is 250 minus 200 over 15 minus 10. Okay. So 250 minus 200, that is 50, of course. Then 15 minus 5 is 5. Am I? Okay. Our slope now is 5, uh, 50 divided by 5 is 10. So, the slope natin is positive 10. Alright. So, we can now compute for the formula. Again, let's use this modified uh, slope formula. No? Palitan natin ito na y. Ito naman is x. Alright. Let's substitute. We have the value for the slope, which is 10. And equals y minus y1 is 200 over x minus 10. Again, let's multiply both equations. Tama ba? x minus 10. All right. Both equations by x minus 10. Yeah. So we have, lagi ko na dito, so we have 10 times x minus 10 equals y minus 200. Okay, let's multiply. We have 10x minus 100 is equal to y minus 200. And let's transpose again, 200 to the other side. So we have 10x minus 100 plus 200 is equal to y. Let's simplify it further. 10x uh, plus 100. Kasi negative 100 plus 200 is positive 100 is equal to y. Balik tarin natin. Y intercept form. We have 10x plus 100. And again, we substitute uh, y sa qs. So this is now qs plus 10x. 10p, I mean. Yeah, 100. This is now our quantity supply equation. So, happy natin dito. Alright. So, we are done now with requirement 2 and 3. Okay. Highlight natin. Okay. What are the other requirements? Ito na. Pagsabay-sabay na natin. Determine the equilibrium price, equilibrium quantity, and equilibrium point. Okay. Using, siyempre, yung na-compute natin earlier, which is ito. So, let's copy this one. Alright. Again, ang equilibrium natin is where QD and QS are the same. Equilibrium. QD is equal to QS. Okay? Again, let's substitute. This is the value for uh, QD, yung negative 5P plus 700. And the value for QS naman is the 10P plus 100. So for QD, that's negative 5P plus 700 equals 10P plus 0 0.00. Equilibrium price natin, 14.00. Okay, hopefully, ayan, let's try to substitute again. Mm. Sir naman eh. Negative 5 times 40 plus 700. Uh, 5 times 40. That's 200. So, QD now is equal to negative 200 plus 700. So, quantity demand natin is 500. As for the quantity supplied, let's substitute. Okay. So, we have QS is equal to 10 times 40 plus 100. So, we have QS is equal to 400 plus 100. 
Yan, QS now is 500 units. Okay? So, our equilibrium uh, quantity is 500 units. Ayan. Alright. So, what would be now our equilibrium point? Actually, this both na ang ating equilibrium point. No? So, our equilibrium point, if you will try to put it no, as a sentence, the equilibrium point is the price is 40 pesos and the quantity is 500 units. Okay. Let me delete this one muna. Ayan. So, this is now our, our equilibrium point. No. So, that is how we compute for uh, the equilibrium point and that is our equilibrium analysis. A point to where the buyer and seller will agree upon a price. Again, I need you to comment your name no, for the attendance. And I guess, I guess, I guess this would be our uh, last topic for the semester. And thank you and I will see you in our uh, examination period. Goodbye.